What is up guys? Welcome to a new Sith 4 video. We're going to be doing a Wonders tier list today and talking about the various great Wonders in Sith 4 and what they're worth, which ones are worth going for, which ones can be worth going for, which ones aren't really worth going for, and which ones are definitely going to be fail gold, as in you do not finish it deliberately and just sink hammers into it to get money for your hammers, which is a very viable strategy in Civ 4. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. So we're splitting it into five tiers. We've got S top tier, which is going to be a couple of extremely overpowered wonders that will change your game completely. Then we have the D tier, never build, only fail gold. You never want to build the wonders in here pretty much, unless very specific circumstances, but generally just no. Um, I have the Civ 4 Wiki open as well in a tab here, so we can open up the Wonders on this and look at each of them specifically, like, and talk about the details and what they cost and whatnot should give a much clearer picture of what's going on. So yeah, before I dive into it, I just want to say leave a like, comment, subscribe, support the channel. You can support it entirely for free by doing so and it helps recommend the video to new viewers. Um, if you really want to reach out and keep these kinds of videos going, then there's a donate link in the description. But yeah, any support is appreciated, and hope you guys enjoy it. So let's dive straight into it. First wonder is going to be the Great Lighthouse, because it is the best wonder in the game. Right at the top, S tier. Um, the reason for this is, yeah, two trade routes in all coastal cities. This is extremely overpowered. Put some music on in the background here, actually. My no copyright playlist. All right, sorry. Um, this one that gives two trade routes in all coastal cities. Um, trade routes is just free commerce, and that's a minimum of two commerce per coastal city straight up, which is already good. That's, like, nice. Even in isolation, with no islands, no trading partners, you're getting two commerce per coastal city. That is nice. Now, this magnifies much greater, um, depending on the type of trade routes you get. <clears throat> so, if you open borders with another sieve on your landmass, you will get double for having an external trade route, so it'll be two to three commerce each city or each trade route in each city. So that's like up to six raw commerce for free per city that you settle on the coast. You settle the city, bam, it makes one gold from the city center tile. It makes four to six gold from trade routes. Um, in fact, it already starts with one trade route by default. So it's, it'll have three trade routes immediately, which is like, yeah, six plus commerce. So it's making like seven gold, seven commerce, immediately as the city is settled which basically pays for itself with the maintenance if not making immediate profit and then you've got the tiles that you're gaining to work you know water tiles more commerce food hammers it's just so strong having this kind of bonus in all your coastal cities now this varies depending on the type of map you play so maybe inland sea or pangaea or lakes or something with not too much water you might not be too interested in this wonder, but a lot of the a lot of the maps have a lot of water in them, um, like continents, fractal, Terra, even Pangaea, and it has enough water to get a good value out of this. Even if only half your cities are affected, it's still worth building. So that's why it's a top wonder. The other thing we can talk about is the cost of this wonder. It requires sailing and masonry, which are two fairly cheap techs, and they're not entirely useless, although they are a bit of a detour. Now, it is much easier to build this thing if you start on the coast, because usually your capital will have a bunch of forests and some good tiles to work normally. If you settle your city in place on any normal map script, you should just have forests and some good tiles to work. Um... So, yeah, 
having that extra production to pump this thing out quickly is good. And it's only 200 hammers. It's not too expensive. There's no resource that speeds this up. So no marble or stone, you don't have to worry about that. Industrious still helps, or organized, to get the lighthouse a bit quicker, which is also required for it. Um, but yeah, it's not too expensive to build any leader starting on the coast with like a couple mines can just build this thing. And you can get this very consistently, even on the highest difficulty levels in the game, Immortal and DT. The AI will not build this too early. If you build this by about 1500 BC, you have like a, I don't know, 95% chance of getting it. So very consistent and very strong. So this tier list is also going to measure the wonders based on how much investment they take and how much expansion and, and such you're sacrificing to get them because I think that's a very important metric. So yes, keep that in mind as we're ranking these wonders. And we'll see some good examples of that later. Let's talk about the second best wonder, the Pyramids. The Pyramids are absolutely amazing as well, and they're the only other wonder that's on the same category as the Great Lighthouse, in my opinion. Um, everything else comes below these two. This is, like, slightly weaker than the Great Lighthouse, in my opinion. It doesn't give you raw commerce. It gives you access to all government civics. Now, government civics are really powerful in this game. You unlock stuff such as representation really early, which usually does not come until mid-Renaissance era. But you get this really early with the pyramids, and these bonuses are really powerful. Three beakers per specialist. Specialist is the uh, little dudes on the right of your city screen. Citizens, scientists, merchant artists, engineers, etc. All of those will generate three extra beakers, even if you're not, even if you're just working a citizen. That's still three beakers extra for the citizen. So that's really powerful. Um, you typically notice it when you run a bunch of rep scientists after building a library in your cities. You get so much extra research, right? This boosts your research power. Very similar to the Great Lighthouse. Um, so yeah, very powerful, very game changing. And the thing is, both the Pyramids and the Great Lighthouse can really save your game if you have bad land that has not much long-term potential, like a very arid climate with lots of plains and desert. You can't really develop that land very well at all if it's just like plains, desert, and lots of hills and stuff. No rivers, no floodplains. This is the kind of land where you really need to build one of these wonders to keep up with the other sieves, or you will fall behind and lose the game. So yeah, it unlocks representation really early, that's the main thing about it. But not only that, it also unlocks... Uh, I'm trying to find it... Police State! Police State is also extremely strong to get in this game for Warfare. And you can use this in a construction rush, or engineering rush, or cuirassier rush, or cannons, or whatever you want to go for. 25% military unit production. This is a big deal. This is 25% production in every city, essentially, when you're at war. Which is extremely powerful. Usually, you do not get this civic until fascism. Fascism comes after assembly line. That means you already have factories and coal plants in your cities when you usually get this. And this bonus is kind of whatever at that point, because you already have so many other bonuses stacked up. But in the early game and the mid game, the only bonus you might get is a forge, and that's it. So this 25% is a big deal. When you're using slavery to build units, you know, you might be able to two population whip, say, a trebuchet or a knight instead of three population. And then, you know, you're using less food to hurry your units. Or you work a mine, and that mine is effectively giving you uh, five hammers instead of four hammers towards your units. Really, really powerful, both of these civics being unlocked early on. And it's even better on a spiritual civ who can switch between the civics and get great benefit out of them. Now, the thing about the pyramids is it is really hard to build 500 hammers flat. You kind of need the stone, and you don't always have stone. 
so it is a bit dependent on having stone. Generally, you don't want to go for it if you don't have stone. And for this very reason, I rank it a little bit behind the Great Lighthouse. Now, that being said, the Great Lighthouse also is map dependent itself. You kind of need coast, right? You can't build it if you're not on the coast or if you don't have a good coastal city to build it in. So both are a little bit dependent on the circumstances. But I think the Great Lighthouse is a bit more consistent than the pyramids. It can be tough to get stone sometimes. And even with stone, it's still 250 hammers. Um, so yeah, there's that. But nonetheless, very strong wonder and only requires masonry to get. All right, let's talk about some of the weaker wonders now. Versailles, this one is really bad. Statue of Zeus, this is also really bad. Um, the Chichen Itza, or as I like to say, Chicken Pizza. These are probably three of the worst ones in the game. I'm probably going to add more to this later. I'm looking... These stand out the most. Um, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so this is D tier. Never build. Fail God only. Um, which one's the worst? Okay, so Versailles. This is just really weak, in my opinion. It reduces maintenance in nearby cities. Where is it? 800 hammers. Right, keep this in mind. This is 800 hammers. And this comes at Divine Right, which is like late medieval era or early renaissance. 800 hammers just to reduce the maintenance in nearby cities around the city that this is built in. Not really worth the investment in my opinion. Too expensive. It also requires Divine Right, which is a very odd tech pathway. This technology gives nothing except founds a religion and access to these two wonders. It requires theology and monarchy, and you don't really want theology either. And when you're on like higher difficulty, this is like 2,000 beakers almost. The theology is like 800, so this is like 2,800 beakers just to be able to build a wonder that reduces maintenance in nearby cities, which also costs a lot of hammers. It's such a big investment that just is not worth it. Because if you're having maintenance problems, you can build the courthouse, which then unlocks the Forbidden Palace. And this does the exact same effect as Versailles, but only costs 200 hammers and doesn't require a stupid tech pathway. So this kind of wins, doesn't it? <laughs> Just build this if you're having maintenance problems. Um, yeah, so I don't really see the point of Versailles. If you could just build the Forbidden Palace, it's too much of an investment, and 800 hammers is so much. That is more than, like, say, Taj Mahal, which is a wonder that comes after, and is just straight up better by starting a Golden Age, and being at a better tech. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just so bad. It kind of needs to have an additional effect to it to be good. But they kind of messed that up. So this is one you definitely want to fail gold. You should not be building this unless you're trying to get it for the culture or something, for a silly culture victory or something. But you can say that for any wonder, pretty much. Um, but yeah, bottom tier. I think it's a little bit more useful than chicken pizza and um, the statue of Zeus, though. So the Statue of Zeus, I'm going to say this is the worst wonder in the game because it screws over your enemies. Now, this might be okay in multiplayer versus real players because real players do suffer war weariness. But when you're playing against the AI, especially if you're on Monarch, Emperor, Immortal, or DT, like any of the above average difficulty levels, the AI cheats and gets reduced war weariness. So you add 100% to whatever war weariness they're suffering, then they get, say, 50% less or something for Monarch, and it only gets, like, worse after that. It might be, like, 30% less for Immortal and 20%... No, 70% less for Immortal and, like, 80% less for Deity. It's 
insane, something like that. The war weariness reduction. Um, you can dive into the code to see the actual values. I don't remember them off by heart, but it's something silly like that. And yeah, not only that is this wonder screws over your enemies. That's cool, but it doesn't do anything to help you. And, you know, you have to go aesthetics and you have to go for this fairly early and build this thing early. And you also need ivory to build it quickly, which is like a very big hit or miss. 300 hammers. Okay, that's nice and cheap. That's great. But I don't know. It's just doesn't do anything for you economically. Giving the AI one or two extra unhappy faces after 50 turns of being at war with them doesn't seem like something that you want to invest early research and hammers on. Wouldn't you rather go build something else like the Great Library, which comes right after Aesthetics? That actually like really helps you, and we'll talk about this one a bit later. It's just not good, dude. Like, this is 100% a fail gold wonder for me. I would never build this in a real game that I'm trying to like play normally. Okay, next up we have Chicken Pizza. This one is pretty terrible as well. 25% defense bonus to all cities and that's it. You get profit points, which isn't exactly great either. Requires stone, well, double production speed with stone. 500 hammers. This costs as much as the pyramids, but look at the difference. Pyramids unlocks all the best civics in the game early on. This thing just gives a defense bonus. Now the thing is, the defense bonus isn't even that useful, even if you're playing always war, or a game where you're fighting a lot of wars. I do not want to build this thing, because I would rather the money from putting hammers into it, and then someone else building it, and then getting a lot of money for all the hammers I put into it. It's just much better to get fail gold out of this thing. The defense bonus really doesn't do anything, because by this stage, Cod of Laws, AI is probably close to construction, and they will bombard your cities down anyway. And that defense bonus just means one extra turn that they sit there bombarding. And that's not even a good thing sometimes. That allows them to stack up more units and hit you harder when they attack the city. So defense bonuses aren't even worth it sometimes. So let's talk a little bit about that actually. Um, when I'm fighting a war against the AI, if, I'm, if I have units ready, and I want them to attack me and die, I won't build walls or castle, I will just let them bombard the defences quickly and then throw their units at me and die. Now walls and castles can be good if they attack you suddenly and you need time to get defences, because if you have walls or castle and they have catapults, they will sit there and bombard it until the defence comes down. This allows them to stack up more units, but this allows you to also stack up more defences. So that can be good in a panic reaction when you get surprise attacked. But, you don't want to build this wonder. Just whip walls in the city. Like, use slavery and quickly get walls using that if you really need a defense bonus. This is just not worth it. Just take the 500 gold or 499 gold or whatever. Don't build this. Just don't build this. It's not good. It is terrible. Okay, so that's our three worst wonders. Let's talk about some other ones. I'm going to move on to A tier, I think. So, some wonders that jump out to me in the A tier, probably the Great Library and the Mausoleum of Mazalus. These two are very, very strong. Probably A plus tier. They're close to S tier, but just a little less consistent than um, the S tier itself. And any others I want to put in there? Taj Mahal, the Oracle, and maybe the Great Wall. Kind of in this order as well. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So let's start with the Great Library. The Great Library is at Literature, which is like early classical era. You just go Aesthetics, Polytheism into Literature. Very cheap tech. Cheap tech. Not too expensive tech. And this is a very good wonder to go for on higher difficulty levels. This gives you a lot of great scientist points. You get two free scientists. Now this is actually magnified with um, the pyramids representation bonus. So if you can get this and the pyramids, that makes this even more powerful. Just a little bit, but it's it's a nice little bonus. Some good synergy there because these um, 
synergize with the representation bonus. I don't know if it says in here, but um, yeah, you get the idea. 350 hammers and sped up with marble. So 350 is not too much. You can build this without marble, especially if you're industrious, you, can't, you can. That'll be what, 225 or something, 233 hammers. 233, that's still less than the pyramids with stone, right? So you can build this if you're industrious without marble. If you're not industrious, it might be a bit hard. But maybe if you have like lots of production and you have mathematics and you chop a lot of forests, you can still build this without the resource. That's what's great. It's very accessible and it tends to go quite late. The AI often skip aesthetics and literature for a long time. So that means any of the wonders associated with these technologies, you can kind of delay for a while or you don't have to build straight away. Um, that being said, DD AI will always find ways to surprise you. So if you're playing on DT difficulty, you're better off just getting this as early as you can, going straight to literature and using like aesthetics to trade for your other technologies, common DD strategies. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this requires a library which you want to build anyway to boost your research. And the great scientists go a long way. Now this does obsolete later on at scientific method. The other two wonders we talked about um, Pyramids and Great Lighthouse don't obsolete for a long time. I guess Great Lighthouse obsolete's a corporation, but that's really late. You can delay that until assembly line. Sometimes you get to scientific method quite early if you're trying to go communism. Yeah, mainly communism, which is really strong for like mitigating your maintenance, especially with overseas col colonies and such. Um... So this can be obsoleted fairly early, but you still get a lot of value out of it until then. And yeah, two free scientists makes a big deal, especially with uh, philosophical, or if you build the national epic, or if you do some golden ages, or where you build the Parthenon, the bonus on the great person points takes that into account and you generate great people very quickly in the city. So then you can run two normal scientists on top by using your library and just run like have four scientists going and you will just pump out the dudes you will be able to use the great scientists for a lot of things which is why this is good make an academy you can bulb education you can bulb philosophy you can bulb printing press you can bulb astronomy you can bulb liberalism you can bulb chemistry you can do so much with the great scientists and uh, and all that you can also golden age with them so yeah so many options really great great person to get so very valuable wonder in that sense a lot of potential now it's not as consistent and a little bit more tricky to use than say the great lighthouse which just gives you a ton of commerce for free so that's why it's a little bit weaker than it in my opinion but the scientists can still do a lot and this can really help your game sometimes especially if you're like a philosophical sieve you're talking thousands and thousands of beakers saved in the long run so yeah very good thing to get um the next one is the mausoleum of mazalus this is one of my favorites but i don't think it's at the top tier it's probably about fourth in the list i think that's a fair place to rank it i do think it's a little better than taj mahal but it's harder to get so taj mahal is kind of like the sister of this wonder i put it like one place behind it taj mahal starts a golden age the moment it is built and it comes at nationalism, which is quite a convenient pathway because, you know, you want to go nationalism for a lot of stuff like through seers or maybe getting constitution. Um, so you can get this for an economical route or for a militaristic route and then build this thing in the process on your way there. It starts a golden age immediately. Quite expensive, 700 hammers. Not too bad at that stage of the game, though. Uh, Mausoleum of Mazalus is 450 hammers, which is also quite expensive, but not quite as bad as the pyramids. Now, you need marble for both of these wonders. Otherwise, they're pretty much impossible to build without marble. Maybe an industrious sieve with some bonuses can get away with it, but you really don't want to be doing that, I think. Um, so this one increases, 50, increases Golden Age length by 50%. So... 
What does that mean? That means four turns extra Golden Age every time you do a Golden Age on normal speed, that is. So four extra turns each Golden Age. You're going to do at least two, maybe three Golden Ages every game. So you're getting at least one free Golden Age technically from this. And then, you know, you're choosing when to launch the Golden Age as opposed to the Targe just dumping it immediately as the Wonders built. So I think that's a bit more flexible. But it also doesn't benefit you immediately, this wonder. It, you know, benefits you later on when you're ready to Golden Age and that you don't really feel this wonder until you do the Long Golden Ages. Then once you're doing the Long Golden Ages, you're like, ah, yes, it's so good to have this thing. <laughs> um, this pairs really nicely with Taj, obviously, because the free Golden Age from Taj also gets affected by this boost. So, yeah, you can do, like, some crazy Golden Age chains with this and Taj Mahal and have, like, 49 turns of Golden Age. Finishing Taj Mahal in a Golden Age gives you one extra turn of Golden Age, which is kind of cool. But yeah, it, it comes at Calendar, which is a bit of a investment, especially if you don't have appropriate Calendar resources. And usually you want stuff like, I don't know, Currency or Code of Laws, maybe, or Monarchy before Calendar. Depends. Sometimes Beelining Calendar is okay, though. It's not terrible. But yeah, you need to go for this fast, and this wonder tends to go quite early. It can go at like 600 BC on Didi, which means you don't have a chance to really build it by 600 BC. You just don't. You can't get Calendar and build it in that time, really. You just can't. Very often, anyway. But sometimes they don't build it for a while, and you might be able to get it at 200 BC or 1 AD by going like Aesthetics Literature and trading for current trading for calendar and currency and stuff and then you build it yourself because you're the only one who has marble connected maybe and yeah you can get away with this on dd quite often not immortal though you have a much better shot at getting it they don't build it too early on that difficulty or anything below it so very powerful if you get to build it it's just a bit tricky to get it in my opinion that's why it's a tier down but otherwise the effect is extremely valuable um all right Next up we have the Oracle. Maybe I've underrated the Oracle in the past. I think it's really good. Even on Didi, if you can get it, like say you're industrious or you have a high commerce start and sinking beakers into the text isn't, you know, too crippling and then building it. It's actually really good. You get Code of Laws or something or maybe metal casting for free for building this thing. One free technology. Um, really good. And on lower difficulties or easier starts, you can oracle some crazy stuff like civil service or feudalism. I think it's really valuable though. Just getting Code of Laws really early gives you the ability to overexpand like crazy and stuff because you can just trade trade the technology to get your economic techs like Alphabet and stuff like that or writing or bronze working or whatever you didn't research in order to get this it can be really good so yeah i think there's a lot of value in this wonder it generates a great profit which it which isn't great i generally think like scientist is what you want in the early game um to get an academy up so if you generate a great profit you know that's cool you can found a religion or settle it but then you're not getting a scientist for a very long time after that because the great person point threshold goes up by double for the second guy so that's something to keep in mind the profit points can screw you over um if you're worried about this then get a library up in another city and start running scientists there fast and don't run scientists in the city that builds the oracle and that way the other city will still get the guy out first for that initial cost of 100 great person points but um yeah that's that getting a free technology i think it's very valuable good wonder oops Okay, so next up we have the Great Wall. This wonder I've also kind of overrated, uh, no, underrated, I think. I think this wonder's really powerful. Um, on high difficulty levels even. It's a bit of an investment to get, just like Oracle, it can cripple your expansion. So Oracle, Great Wall, they're both fairly cheap, 150 hammers. 
but likely with how early these two wonders go, you won't have the resources connected unless you like settle on stone and build the wall. Maybe you can get it really easily that way. But the, um, yeah, the Great Wall kind of saves you some hammers in return by preventing barbarians from entering your borders on the continent. So that means you don't have to be building archers or chariots or axemen or lots of warriors or whatever to defend yourself. You can just focus purely on workers and settlers and that helps you catch up on expansion after sinking 150 hammers into it. So it kind of makes up for its investment already with that. It depends on the map, of course. If there's a map, if it's a map with not too many barbarians harassing you, then you probably won't benefit that much from preventing them from entering your borders, right? So maybe it's not the best thing to build in that situation. However, it also generates a Great Spy. And the Great Spy is interesting. That's another thing of its own. Um, so let's see. The Great Spy can be really, really good on high difficulty levels, especially if your land is weak and you're going to fall behind in technology. So in that sense, it's almost like the Pyramids or Great Lighthouse, right? It's like changing your game when you have terrible land. And you can use the Great Spy to infiltrate a city, which gives you 3,000 spy points on the target Sif. And if you get Alphabet and start putting some spies in there and wait for that 50% discount on the stationary spy, you can get a lot of tech. And I use this wonder in Always War. I have a few games on Always War. Um, so if you want to see this wonder in action, check it out on the um, Always War games. Check out those videos. Done quite a few of those. Um, not only does it generate the Great Spire, it also gives you great general emergence inside cultural borders, which means when you fight within your own borders, you're generating more great general points, which is great for always war because they all come to you and die to your fortified archers and longbows, etc. So yes, this thing is SSS tier in always war. Maybe in a normal game though, it's still not bad. The spy can be good, but you're giving up your early scientists to get a spy, keep that in mind. And it also, yeah, the Barbarian's prevention is quite nice. So yeah, AT Wonder, I think it's really good. Okay, so we have a decent start here. Let's talk about some of the others. So Statue of Liberty is an interesting one. The effect of the Statue of Liberty is like S tier, but the investment that it takes drops it down to B tier. Um, 1500 hammers, dude, in late Renaissance. It's so friggin' expensive. And really hard to get this on high levels. You can get away with it on Immortal sometimes if you're doing really good and you have a strong economy, you're the tech leader and you go for it early. You can build this on Immortal, sure. On Didi, it's not gonna happen. The AI is too fast at teching on DD, and they also pump out wonders like crazy on DT because their cities are like size 20 with all their stupid bonuses that they get, and they will just, yeah, they will work 20 forests to build this thing in 20 turns if they have to. That's, that's how they roll. But the that aside, the bonus is really powerful. A free specialist in all cities. By this point of the game, you've unlocked constitution and representation, making your specialists already much better. So it's a free rep specialist in all cities on the continent, which is like, if it's a scientist, that's like six or seven beakers each city on the continent, which is really powerful. Or it could be an engineer, which is some hammers and beakers, and it's just free. Not only that, it's a free specialist, which means it contributes towards great person generation. Also really good. But yeah, the investment that this takes, you have to go a very odd kind of tech path. Well, printing press is good, but constitution, you might not always need this. And then democracy, a lot of beakers together. In actuality, this tech costs like 5,000 beakers or 4,500. And then constitution is like 3,000 or so in like a mortal difficulty. So yeah, that's a lot of research you're sinking into this. That could be going into stuff like communism and getting that food bonus and maintenance reduction instead. 
not always worth it. And yeah, the 1500 hammers, it takes so long to build this because you haven't quite hit factory and levy era yet or state property workshop. So you don't have crazy tiles and tons of bonuses in your cities yet. It's really, really tough to build that. It's going to take like 20 turns in a golden age to build it, like 30 turns normally. It's such a big investment. It's just generally not worth it too often, but I still put it B tier just because it's really strong. Um, and you can do it on Immortal sometimes. <laughs> or with a Great Engineer, maybe. Okay, what else do we have? Um, the Pentagon. I'm going to put the Pentagon in A tier, and I think this kind of position works for it. I think this one is also very underrated. I don't underrate this. I'm one of the few people that actually really see the strength in this, I think, and I think this deserves to be A tier. It is a free promotion in all cities, essentially, if you are if you have a barracks, which means you do not need to go into vassalage or theocracy to get that promotion. You can build this and then utilize other civic effects. This means you could go into nationhood and draft a bunch of dudes. And they will have one promotion with a barracks and this. You could go you could um go organize religion or free religion instead of theocracy. Which is another way to get the two experience points. Or you could stack everything up: barracks, vassalage, theocracy, and the Pentagon, and be charismatic, or have a stable, or whatever, and get three promotion units in all your cities. Um, so maybe not the stable if, if you're building tanks, but, um, <clears throat> so you say you're charismatic or you have settled great generals, um, three promotion tanks is extremely strong. City Raider three tanks, that 40% bonus on the City Raider three promotion because it's a bonus 30% city attack and 10% versus gunpowder units. And most of the stuff you fight at that era are gunpowder units. So really, really powerful, making your units that much stronger and allowing you to run other civics if you're fine with just two promotions. Nationhood, bureaucracy, free religion, etc. That's a lot of value, I think. And the other thing is the investment in building this is not too bad. Okay, it's 1250 hammers. That's a lot. But guess what? It's still cheaper than the Statue of Liberty, which is kind of funny. And because... Um, this is post assembly line or at assembly line, which means you have access to levies already for sure. And you might want to build a quick factory and coal plant before building this thing. And then this thing will be so much faster. You will get like a 75% production boost plus the raw hammers you've gained from building a levy. And then you've got probably state property workshops and water mills. You know, your actual production is so much better at this stage of the game than say at democracy when you're trying to build Statue of Liberty. So it's so much more accessible and that's why I put this in A tier. The effect isn't the greatest thing ever, but I think it's nice and is very accessible. So yeah, good wonder, A tier. Okay, next up we will talk about, uh, let's see, <clears throat> Stonehenge. I don't think this one does very good. Some people love this, and I noticed like a lot of newbie players on Noble Prince Monarch try and do tier lists. They put this up high, I've seen, but it's just not a good wonder. Uh, sacrificing 120 early, early, early hammers to get a free monument in your cities is not worth it. You might think, okay, if you settle more than four cities, you're making money, you know, out of this thing. That's not how it works. You're sacrificing expansion. You're in your capital in the early stages. You could build a settler instead of this and then have two cities, then build another settler and then have four cities, then build workers. You know, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot by building this thing because you need to build this really early, earlier than the Oracle, earlier than the Great Wall. You need to build this when you're on one city pretty much. Maybe on lower levels, you can build it in your second city, but still it can go at 2000 BC on noble difficulty sometimes. So I don't know, dude. It's just not that good. 
the prophet is not very useful because you want a scientist generally for the early research even more so on lower difficulties you're paying less maintenance so you want research not gold therefore scientist equals good and a free monument in every city big whoop de do you want to settle your cities in positions that don't need a border pop so settle next to the food don't settle don't try and settle the perfect city that has the greatest 20 tiles or so when it pops its borders you don't need to be doing that just settle a good city that's useful immediately and then you don't need a monument in it and if there's another spot you want that's three tiles away that you couldn't get because you had to settle next to food then just settle another city there later and you can tile share and stuff no worries and it's not hard to get a monument in a new city should you need one you can chop a forest which takes three turns for 20 hammers and then work a hill or something or another forest to get that extra 10 hammers and then you have a monument finished in less than five turns and yeah so much easier to do at that stage because you've spent your early hammers into settlers and workers instead of into a stonehenge so yeah i don't know i don't think this is a good wonder the center's world map is cute but it's not that useful it really isn't you can kind of figure out where you are on the map by looking at the terrain the types of trees you're dealing with which side the tundra and ice is on and which side the jungle's on etc so yeah kind of a beginner trap this wonder i don't think it's very good this goes dt at best of Oh, C tier at best, sorry. It's like a C minus. I'm tempted to put this here. Like, in some cases, maybe a mortal difficulty and below, you can run a cute little religion economy and build this thing. I do it very occasionally on Immortal if I'm doing like religion culture gaming, but it's not good. Okay. And I want to make this clear because, like, yeah, some games I do build silly wonders that I'm rating very lowly here, but um, I don't recommend it. If you're trying to play a strong game on the highest difficulty that you can play, this is not something you should be doing. Okay, next up, what else? Um, Anchor Watts can go down here too. This wonder is about the same. It's like... One hammer from priests in all your cities. Okay, so it makes the priest specialist, which is like a really crappy specialist, which is already worse than... Oh, oh sorry. Priest is one and one. A scientist is three. A merchant is three. These are better than priests. So by adding one extra hammer, it makes it on par with the other specialists. Maybe slightly better, because hammers are slightly better. <coughs> Hammers are slightly better than um, Commerce and Beakers. Um, but I don't know, dude. The investment this takes, 500 hammers. You could just get 500 gold and not run priests and be in a better situation. So this wonder kind of goes at that C minus tier. This is also like mostly fail gold, by the way just to make that clear. You generally don't want to be building these wonders. These are failed gold. Very, very occasionally you might actually build this thing, but 500 gold and just not running priests is just better. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so next up, what else? Hagia Sophia also kind of goes in this tier. I might put that like a little bit better. This is C tier. Like a healthy C tier, not C minus, although I don't like how expensive it is. This can go pretty early when someone like Isabella or Justinian beelines this technology. It goes obsolete at Steam Power, which is when you want to do a lot of late game improvements, which is kind of annoying, and you get that bonus for free at Steam Power anyway. So the obsolete thing is kind of an issue with it, which drops it down a ranking, so maybe it is C minus after all. Workers build improvements 50% faster. Now that sounds really, really good, doesn't it? Except this gets rounded down. 
So a five turn cottage does not turn into a three turn cottage. It turns into a four turn cottage, which is like, okay. Five turn farm becomes a four turn farm. It's just a very, very small difference. I think a seven turn farm does become a five turn farm. Three turn chop becomes a two turn chop, maybe. But yeah, it's just, you could just have 500 hammers. You know, you could put 100 of that hammers to get more workers and then 400 of those hammers to get um, bail gold and be better, you know? You could just build a bunch of workers instead and it's just better that way, I think. It's just 50% bonus rounded down isn't much to justify this. Also, is that an awkward technology? You generally don't want to go for this early, so yeah. Not very good. Sorry, my mouse decided to act up there. Okay, next up. Uh, Colossus B tier. Parthenon B tier. Sistine Chapel. I'm going to put this C tier. I'm going to stop there and talk about these three now. Let's talk about the Colossus first. The Colossus. Uh, hold on. Probably in this order, actually. This wonder gives all water tiles one commerce. I think this is a B plus wonder. It's actually pretty good. It goes obsolete at astronomy, which is kind of annoying because this could be really good in isolation maps, except you're beelining astronomy. So you're beelining the obsolation tech for this, which means just don't build this then. Just fail gold it. Because if you're beelining astronomy, you're going to get it like 10 or 15 or 20 turns after building this thing, and then you know, you're better off just getting fail gold at that point if it's coming that early. Now, on maps that you can delay astronomy, such as Archipelago, because you can cross continents with galleys or fractals which you might not need to go overseas immediately on or continents etc then this is actually really good um i actually got play out of it i think once maybe twice on dd i definitely did on the hannibal water economy game dd number 61 one of the hardest dd games i've ever played by the way so check that out if you want to watch something painful <laughs> um but this wonder might have saved that game actually can be really good if you don't need early astronomy. Um, extra commerce, yeah, it's good. Especially if you're financial, then the water tiles become absolutely amazing, even more so if you do a golden age. Really good. Um, it does require you to go metal casting, build a forge, and then build the Colossus, but it's not too expensive, right? And forges aren't bad to get. So the investment is not too bad, and the reward is pretty good if you're not obsoleting it early. So yeah, I think this is like B plus tier. Um, in an archipelago map, you actually really want to go for this. So in an archipelago map, it has lots of tiny islands. You definitely want the Great Lighthouse. That's a first priority on archipelago. Then after the Great Lighthouse, you might want to go for something like the Colossus next. You want Trireums to deal with the Barb Galleys, because they're really annoying. Uh, forges will give you some production and then yeah getting the colossus will boost your commerce a lot on that map and you don't need to go early astronomy on that map so it's actually really really good the parthenon parthenon's a tricky one it's an investment in a slower game with no tech trading where you're getting to scientific method later and not obsoleting this thing early then this can be really really good and pay off a lot in some cases, especially Didi, where the tech pace is extremely fast, this tends to be mostly fail gold. But this can be really good in slower paced games, and it can be really good for a culture victory as well, by getting great artists out more frequently. So I think this one is quite good. Um, aesthetics is, you know, it's good. It, it leads to the Great Library as well, it comes on the way to the Great Library, so you can build this and the Great Library and you're kind of vibing with marble. A little bit more expensive than the Great Library, but not too much more. But can be... Yeah, it's not too bad with marble. Only 200 hammers when you have marble, so... Quite nice. Generally a pretty good wonder. Um, never bad to have. 
It's just sometimes fail gold is more valuable than it if you're going to obsolete it early, but yeah. It depends a bit. Okay, next up we have... I don't know. Shreggan Empire. I'm going to put this down at the bottom, I think. I don't like the Shreggan Empire very much. Oh, and Sistine. Okay. We'll talk about Shreggan Empire first. This is a bottom tier wonder. I don't think the Religion Civics being unlocked early are worth the investment for this. The Religion Civics, you can get them pretty easily by just teching the techs required for them. Monotheism unlocks Organized Religion. And Organized Religion is probably, you know, the first Religion Civic you want to use to spread your religion around and get your basic infrastructure going in your newer cities. Um, also to get like forges up and stuff, etc. Generally a good thing to get early on. And it comes at monotheism, which means you're probably gonna have monotheism before you even have this thing built. Um, the next up we have uh, pacifism and theocracy. Those are unlocked respectively at philosophy and theology, which aren't that far away. Theology is the next tech after monotheism and the religion line. And for, uh, yeah, theology is the next tech after monotheism and philosophy can be bulbed with a great scientist really early as soon as you have a code of laws. So these can be accessed very early normally, which means this wonder doesn't do a whole lot other than open up free religion, but you don't really need free religion that early. I think it's good to invest in a religion and spread it around and stuff. I mean, it can be good if you're, if you don't have a religion, but then you don't get the happiness from it either. I don't know. It's just not something you want to sink 450 hammers into. I'd rather just the fail gold in every single circumstance, pretty much. I'd rather just take the fail gold or not build it. So that's my opinion on that. And that's why that goes in D tier, maybe like D plus tier. But still, D tier. The Hanging Gardens probably goes up here with the Colossus. Yeah, it's like B plus, maybe A minus, B plus. Hanging Gardens. Gives a health in all cities, which is useful, especially for late game. It means you can also sell your health resources for money or other resources should you need it. Or whatever, should you not need your health resources. So that's nice. And then it gives a population in all cities immediately the moment it's built, which can be really good to kickstart your newer cities. You tend to build this fairly early. Um, math is also a good tech, so it's not a huge investment. You do need to get an aqueduct. It's 300 hammers plus an aqueduct, so that can be a lot without stone. Generally not worth investing in without the resource. Um, but if you have stone, it's really fast. You just whip the aqueduct and then chop out the hanging gardens with a couple forests, and bam, you've got it. It's, it's pretty fast if you have stone. And the benefit is nice. I wouldn't say it's a huge deal, but it's nice. So B plus T maybe. Yeah, if you can get it, go for it. It's a good thing to go for. Might not always have that luxury though. So yeah, I think B plus. Now Sistine Chapel. Uh, Sistine Chapel. I don't know, dude. If you're going for a culture victory, then this is S S S S S tier. It's the best thing ever. You need this for a culture victory. But in a normal game, it doesn't do a whole lot. And it's generally better as fail gold. Culture is just not that important to invest in in a normal game. I mean, it, it's nice, sure, you don't lose your tiles, but honestly 600 gold can also be really nice for fail gold with a marble and stuff. Uh, but yeah, the extra culture, like I do fool around with this on Immortal quite often, it can be really fun and it's nice, it's not completely useless, so I think I put it in C tier, C minus, maybe. Maybe better than Anchor Watt. Better than. It's. Yeah, similar to kind of Stonehenge, kind of around there somewhere. Yeah. Um, Alright, next up. What else? We're nearly there. 
Temple of Artemis. Mm. Probably D tier, really. Yeah. This one is just not worth it, dude. I was thinking, like, maybe it's nice. You generate great per great merchant, great profit. You get some nice great person generation with it, and the 100% trade real trade route yield is not a big deal by the time your trade routes become significant to benefit from this you're obsoleting it so that's kind of stupid um you compare that to this you know this is just so much better like 100% trade route yield is probably the same as this in one city but this is in all coastal cities it's just so much better and it's 200 hammers versus 350. This can be sped up with marble, but it also requires going mysticism into polytheism. And this also can go very early. The AI can build this thing really, really early sometimes. It's just not worth going for. It's not enough. Uh, the great people, yeah, it's not a big deal. You're delaying your scientists to get a profit or a merchant. And 350 hammers, I'd rather 350 gold, really. Pretty much every time. So it's just not a good wonder. You don't want to build this thing, really. Okay, let's talk about some of the other ones. Notre Dame. The effect of Notre Dame is kind of like up here. But the investment it takes kind of goes down here. Problem with Notre Dame is the awkward, awkward tech path to it. You need engineering, right? Which requires machinery and construction and gives two happiness. Now, here's the thing. If you're playing an economic game, you're playing peacefully and economically, you don't want to be researching machinery and engineering. You want to be going philosophy, nationalism, paper education or something like that. Those kind of techs. You want to skip engineering and trade for it later, which means someone else is going to build it, probably. Um, now... If you do go for engineering, it's because you want to kill someone with trebuchets, right? It's a military tech. You want to use trebuchets and maybe knights or maces or whatever and kill somebody quickly. You don't want to be sinking 550 hammers into a wonder when you've just unlocked your most powerful military tech to build your most powerful units, right? It just comes at such an awkward time. It's either you avoid the tech to be peaceful and, you know, go for economic techs, or you want to kill people and not be building this thing. So for that, it goes all the way down to like middle of C tier, really. Like down here. Great to capture this thing, but not great to build it yourself. It just doesn't line up well in the tech path. Hopefully that's helpful. Okay, what else? We have um, Apostolic Palace. I'm going to put this C minus. For the reason that the hammers can be nice, you might want to build it sometimes. Uh, better than anchor what actually? Maybe there. But 400 hammers at a very awkward technology. Yeah, not really what you want. Occasionally, you might be able to trade for this technology and then build it yourself, especially if you're industrious with a bureaucracy pumped up capital. Maybe it's not too much at that point. Uh, I've done it like once ever, but generally not worth the investment. Really expensive without a without a resource for it, a marble or stone or whatever. That's a lot of hammers and an awkward technology. Um, it gives you two hammers on your religious buildings, which can be nice if you build it in your religion or whatever. You have to spread that religion around, of course. The voting thing is really like whatever. Yeah, you can diplo cheese with it, but that's generally not the approach that 95% of the Civ players take. So we're just going to like um, discard the, the possibility for diplo cheese victory in this tier list. Otherwise, yeah. Sure, it could be S tier if you're trying to win with it, but no. And similarly, United Nations probably goes down there too. I'm going to put the United Nations a bit lower because you don't even get the free hammers on your religious buildings. It's just, okay, you can vote. 
which can be great if you're winning the game. Okay, situationally very useful, but otherwise doesn't do anything. Would be nice if it gave you like commerce or something because you know it's a global vote building maybe it gives you some money or something for having it i don't know that would be nice but um no it doesn't the thing is you're not even guaranteed to win the vote it's, sometimes the ai is in a love fest with each other and they all vote for each other and you get screwed even though you built this thing and then yeah it doesn't you know you can win diplo victory without building this right you don't need to build this thing so the yeah, you have to go to mass media as well, which is quite an investment in many industrial techs. So I don't know. I don't think it's that good. You don't need this to win the game. and You don't need to build it to win the game, more often than not. Okay, we have a few others here. University of Sankor, that's like a mid-B tier wonder. Um, University of Sankor can be really good can be good, maybe not really, really good. It's a small thing, but two beakers pair religious state religion buildings that can give up to four, maybe six beakers in your cities. Can be good, not a huge deal. 550 hammers, it's pretty expensive. Now this does come at paper, which isn't bad. The investment, like the technology and investment is great. You want to go paper anyway to get education and live in a peaceful game, and then this gives you more research. So this is great for a peaceful game. If you've got religion and religion buildings going, sure, that's nice. Um, but it's a small difference, which you could also just easily take 550 fail gold instead. So it's kind of similar to Parthenon, I think. It's it's dependent. Maybe on a slower game, can be really good to stack it up. Not a not a bad thing at all to build. It's just sometimes the money can be better with a fail gold. And let someone else build it. Depends. Depends on what sort of game you're playing. So yeah, around the middle. Sparrow Minaret, I'm going to put one tier below Sankor because it's a similar effect except it requires a big tech investment. It's kind of awkward like Notre Dame. I really like the benefit on the Sparrow Minaret to gold from all religion buildings. Gold is even better than beakers. Um, because you're paying so much maintenance and you want to keep your slider up high. Um, to benefit from your academy and such. But it requires stupid divine right, which is such an annoying technology to go for. Um, very expensive, doesn't do anything other than unlocks a really bad wonder, and requires theology, like you want to go for education and nationalism instead usually. So, yeah. Not so good. Um, Sankor at least comes at a good technology, Spyro Minaret does not, so tier below. Okay, the Radio Wonders. I'm gonna put these all around B-ish tier, this one being probably the better one, and then this one being the worst one... No, which one? Yeah, it's Hollywood, yeah. Probably in this order specifically. They're all around the same. So let's talk about the Eiffel Tower first. <clears throat> the Eiffel Tower gives a free broadcast tower in every city. And that's pretty good. That's 50% culture. Um, happiness for charismatic leaders. Happiness for having any of these which you can get. If someone else builds a Radio Wonder, you can trade for these. So that's two happiness. Or you can just build the other Radio Wonders yourself because you've gone to the tech to build um, the Eiffel Tower, of course, which is Radio. So you can kind of stack this with the other Radio Wonders and get a lot of late game happiness, which can be really good. It can also be really good for a small sieve who is kind of, you know, strained on resources and doesn't have much stuff to trade. This gives you five copies of a resource which you can then trade for a bunch of other stuff and keep one for yourself to keep the bones. Um, that's these other wonders that is. Not this one specifically, but um, yeah. So I think they all kind of fit into that B category. Kind of talk about them all at once because they all kind of link together here, but this one's probably the best one. The free broadcast tower is really nice. It's like a late game theatre. Uh, the culture, the happiness per culture percent, and then some happiness for some resources. I think this is pretty good. Good thing to get. Yeah, broadcast towers are actually quite expensive, though. Yeah. 
good wonder, I think. And then these ones... I think Hollywood is the worst one because it requires mass media, whereas the other ones come a bit earlier. Broadway being the best because it's earlier at electricity, then rock and roll, radio, Hollywood at mass media. Cristo Redenta, let's talk about that more interestingly. No anarchy and minimal, minimal weight between civics or state religion changes. Now this effect is amazing. The problem is it comes very late. You're already in your late game civics at that point. Now this can be good to do a couple of late game civic changes. Like say you're going to war, okay, swap into police state, kill people, swap back out of police state to rep. Sure, that's nice. You can get a little bit of play out of it, which is enough to uh, bump it up to B tier. But you're mostly set at that point. You're in state property. You're in bureaucracy. You're in, you know, free religion, probably. You're in representation already. You're in most of your late game stuff. You don't really want to flip your civics around too much at this point. But it is cool if you do. No anarchy and then only one turn between switching civics. Um, so yeah, kind of nice to build, but doesn't do a whole lot kind of thing. It's a shame. The effect is really cool on it, but it's just, yeah, it comes very late. All right, the last three. Kremlin. This one is actually really good. I'm going to put it A minus, B plus, kind of about the same as Colossus, as close as you can get to Colossus. Um, if you, I don't use this wonder enough personally, I kind of forget that I have it, but I think it can be really, really powerful if you build it and then play around and try to utilize it. You can two population whip tanks with this wonder, which is completely insane in the late game. Just two pop whip the tanks. Um, so that means using slavery and slaving to population because this gives a 33% discount to the cost of Harry production, which affects slavery as well, which is kind of funny. But it also makes buying stuff with universal suffrage cheaper, which can also be really good, especially if you have a limited amount of production, but a lot of commerce. Say you're playing a financial leader with a lot of towns, but not much hammer tiles or workshops. So that's kind of nice. You can switch to universal suffrage and use the rush buying to get an army very quickly with your money and you get that 33% discount. So pretty cool. Not game breaking, but pretty cool. Can be really good in some circumstances. Uh, the last two, space elevator. I think this thing is terrible somewhere down here. Um, good if you steal it, like capture it while you're going to space from a rival, but you don't want to build this thing yourself. You're better off sinking the research into your spaceship techs rather than going for robotics to build it. The problem with the space elevator is it requires you to not go for spaceship techs. This tech is not required to win the space race. So you're taking a detour to go for this thing and then you have to build it. And then what do you get? You get a small bonus, like... 50%, okay, that sounds like a lot, but it's not. It stacks additively with all the other bonuses that you already have, such as forge, factory, coal plant, or whatever plant, and then um, laboratory. You're going to build laboratories too. So it's more like 20%, not 50%, if you count all the other bonuses that you've already gained. So it's not a big deal, and it's quite a detour to get. It's generally just not worth it when you're going for fast space. But can be good if you capture it. I don't know. Maybe C minus with United Nations. I'll put it there, I suppose. Three gorgeous damn. This thing is actually really good. I'm gonna put this about A T A minus. Um this is actually really good if you're going for a fast space, I believe. Uh one of the people in my Discord, Murray, knows more about this than I do, but it gives you a free power plant in all your cities. And it's clean power as well, which prevents the unhealthiness from affecting you. So, um, yeah, provides power, clean power. Um, so, yeah, it can be really good. Saves you a lot of late game unhealthiness and gets you that free power plant. So what you can do is build a factory in every city and then just run wealth or whatever and 
get to this technology as quick as you can and then rush build this thing as fast as you can and then get a free power plant in all cities which is kind of cool i like that i think that's a cool idea and can be good so i don't know maybe not a tier it's situation dependent so i might go b tier maybe i don't know somewhere around here with these other ones it's like S tier if you're going for space, but if you're not going for space or whatever, you know, down here maybe, I don't know. It's situational. It's hard to really rate it. It's situational. I believe that's all of our Wonders on Civ 4. Uh, no more left in here, so yes. If you have any questions or comments, do post it in the comments. Would love to hear your thoughts on this. This is my opinion, and remember this is... Also based on the investment required on higher difficulty levels. So we're talking Monarch, Emperor, Immortal, DT. You can kind of do whatever you want with Stonehenge and stuff on lower difficulty levels. It doesn't matter too much. But this is for higher difficulty levels and what I feel and what I recommend. Um, how you should consider these wonders. And hopefully, yeah, this helps you realize the value of each one specifically a little bit more. And give you some valuable tips. Um, remember to leave a like or subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more content like this, help recommend to newer viewers, and um, yeah, always welcoming any donations of course, but um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed that and see you on the next video.